Rather than looking for correct behavior, the biblical manner of teaching is to help your child make right choices. It may or may not be self-evident to you that pursuing a particular ambition is a matter of choices. Helping your children to understand the biblical basis for the choices you've made makes it that much easier for them to seek the scriptural basis for their own decisions. Your children need to see that your life flows out of the great value and ambition you place in your relationship with God and your desire to obey His Word. Then they'll more readily adopt the same value and ambition. This is where your role modeling obedient trust in Jesus and encouraging your kids to seek Rhema and establish halakhas will be foundation stones for assuming responsibility for their own pilgrimage with our Lord. People are creatures of habit. It takes awareness to recognize that many other choices they could select beyond those with which they're familiar. In the Great Commission, Jesus tells his followers to teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. In essence, discipling calls for you to teach your children righteous alternative choices to the world's way. Developing halakhas is God's way of establishing biblical principles to guide your life. As we've shared previously, a halakha is a biblically-based choice of applying God's way to a given situation. For example, you might establish a family halakha to refrain from watching violent or immoral programs on TV. You prayerfully explored God's Word together and determined to apply the verse that says to put no wicked thing before your eyes. Take the time to explain to your children the halakhas you have for your family. Keep a family journal of halakhas to fortify your home as a sanctuary where our Lord is always welcome and yourselves as temples in which you are constantly aware of His holy, sustaining presence. As they grow older, guide your children to establish halakhas for themselves. When you establish halakhas, you are reinforcing the Bible and what it does so well. It exposes the motives of the heart. Prayerfully discerning through the Spirit and God's Word how to live in love-grounded, obedient trust evidences His ongoing work of transforming your heart and that of your children. For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Perhaps your children are grown and have messed up their lives through divorce or seizing the world's values. You can still help them, but not through the world's ways. Begin by discovering where you erred in your own ambitions and values as your children were growing up. Confess to our Lord your sin of ignorance and our rebellion because you need the grace of His forgiveness in order to be available to serve your children now. Next, pray and search the scriptures for God's way to put into practice what you should have done years ago when you sinned. Develop a halakha for yourself in that area. Go to your children and ask forgiveness. Then show them what you wish you had taught them earlier. Now the ball is in their hands. We have an important suggestion for you. If you keep your halakhas in a written format, as your children leave home, you can give each one a copy as a spiritual inheritance. Before your child marries, discuss your family halakhas with their betrothed. Before their wedding day, help the couple work through their own halakhas that will affect their marriage relationship. How are you doing in the whole realm of helping your children apply the Bible to their lives? If you haven't been responsible or diligent in this, what do you need to do differently? Ask your family for input. One of the best ways to learn where halakhas need to be established in your family 
is to ask them about the things that are bothering them or are producing apprehension. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. The ambitions of the world flow into and out of every sin-indulgent heart. When these ambitions get passed along without biblical scrutiny, the next generation undergoes the same painful consequences as their predecessors. They fail to experience the love of God. Be sure of this. Your children's heart will be filled one way or another. The ambitions of the world get passed along to children because their parents fail to know and to love God. Fail to grasp what He wants for their lives. Fail to share their relationship with Him with others who need to hear. Fail to spur others on to encounter Him and to walk according to His purposes. Parents who neither love God nor know Him intimately as He desires can't discern the adulterous ambitions of the world. Don't be surprised by the word adulterous. It means sharing the devotion that belongs solely to our Lord with any other heart yearning. Adulterous lifestyles among the church resemble worldly lifestyles with some Christian behaviors attached. But what does our Lord think about such divided loyalties? You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. James chapter 4, verse 4. This is a serious warning. How awful for your children to grow up a Christian, but in fact be an enemy of God. Your influence on your children's goals and values can't be overstated. Remember, you are the prime role model. They're paying far more attention to what you do than to what you say. Make sure your actions and choices line up with your own life. Your children can see through your many Christian activities straight to your heart motives. And why you do what you do is what they'll either respond to or react against. Weigh deeply the message you're handing them. Then ask yourself, is my own faith walk pure? Or is it an alloy of worldly values sheathed with a veneer of spirituality? In ancient times as now, a battle raged within the soul between material worldly success and spiritual righteous victory. Young people 2,000 years ago were just as tempted to pursue worldly pleasures as are today's youth. Remember the prodigal son? Yet the more a child was exposed to the role model of godly, virtuous parents who were willing to forsake material gain to prize that which pleased God, the likelier he was to cling to those values when he matured. Consider these words of Jesus for both you and your family as his encouragement for your ambitions. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus makes no mistakes. In your relationship with God, seek righteousness and make your ambitions persistent and persevering. And make sure your family realizes that this is a righteous ambition for them as well. Does righteousness flow from your conversations? Ask your family. Are you a parent who asks, seeks, and knocks? A parent who persistently looks to God? Ask your family. Does your family hear worldly cravings in your words? 
Ask them. Does that which you crave, whether righteous or worldly, resound in your words and actions? Does your mouth boast about your achievement or possessions? Ask your family for feedback.